So you're taking apart your Meyer E60 with a two lug motor or your E57 with a two lug motor. And when you go to remove the motor, the base of the motor sticks. And you just, you get the whole body, the whole body comes off, you know, whole. Um, you're gonna have to get this thing back together after that happens, because usually the armature is just sticking out. Um, that's uh, in one of my other videos uh, on the E60 rebuild. Anyway, so this is a motor that's defective, but I, I'm using it for illustration purposes, so it came apart quite easily compared to what you're gonna probably fight with. But when the cap is removed, These slots, the brush, excuse me, the, uh, the lugs slide into. There's usually a lot of paint built up in the groove, and you're, you're going to have to pry them out of here. Okay, so basically what happens is when you go to remove it, the armature stays put, and all your brushes shoot out. Here's our washer, wave washer that sits inside the cap. I'll just move that to the side. So now we have to come up with a way to hold all of these in and set it back down over the bearing and then onto the armature again. So let's just remove it. And as I was saying, this, this is what you'll probably be looking at sticking out of the side of your E60. Right here. Or, you know, the 57, 58, etc. It'll be like this, okay? So I'm going to show you what I came up with that's a pretty simple fix. And once you make a set, they're on hand for future use. Here's the fix. I just grab a piece of aluminum TIG wire. Oh, I guess it's, uh, I don't know, 530 seconds. And, uh, bent up a, four, a set of 40s that I keep on hand. And the nice thing is that when you compress the carbon brushes and put all four of these on, you just stand them up. And then when you set this back onto the armature, it'll actually push the clips off as, as it seats itself, as you'll see. All right, I bent up four. Her on. Now I'm going to set it onto the armature and see if I can make a fool out of myself. We don't need the wave washer until we put the cap on. So, here we go. Just want to center it. And you see, we're past the bearing. And I'm just going to lower it down, let it sit. That's it. It's on. It's that simple. It didn't go too far. But that's all it took. These are aluminum. They're nice and easy to bend. Um, I have another set of these that I made uh, for Presta Light Motors out of uh, steel TIG wire, just because it was handy and easy and clean. And uh, as you can see on this, there's two holes in the brush, brush holder for the motor bolts to go through. So that's important. You get them lined up correctly. And then it's just a matter of putting your lugs. Oh, see, they just, just like I said, this is a brand new motor. You won't be this lucky, but they just slide back in. And then what you would do is once you have it all together, hold it tightly. And these come with square nuts when they're new, the motors. Um, I always keep a couple laying around just for this reason. Um, I'm going to not put this together right now. But I want to show you. When the bolt comes through... And you, you you know you want to keep this all together. You got to get the bottom lined up too, obviously. But just rotate until it, the bolt falls in place. Of course, again, make a fool out of myself. <laughs> okay, bolts in place. 
here on the bottom, there's a V notch because when you put the nut on, the notch holds the nut. So you can turn the, the bolt from the top side and tighten it. There's actually been a couple of times where a unit came in and somebody had installed it with the nut still in place. How? I have no idea. So, anyway, that's a very simple way to reassemble your motor that without these simple little things that you can make out of a coat hanger out of your closet or TIG wire or, you know, whatever you want. Hell, I was even thinking metal staples from a cardboard box. Thanks for watching.